Welcome to the next of our special senses. I'm just going to look at hearing and balance. Um, the organs for hearing and balance are both located within the ear. Uh, so that's really what we're talking about is our ears today. Um, the ear is generally broken into three parts. The external ear, which consists of the pinna, uh, which is kind of the, the part that we think of as our ears. Um, then your ear canal um, is the external auditory meatus, which leads to the tympanic membrane or the eardrum. That separates the external ear from the middle ear. The middle ear consists of the tympanic cavity within the temporal bone that houses the three auditory ossicles. Um, that's the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, the smallest bones in your body. Um, and then we have the entrance and the exit to the inner ear, the oval and round windows. Um, in the inner ear, um, this is where we find our organs for balance and hearing. The vestibular apparatus consists of the semicircular canals and the vestibule. Um, those contain the organs for balance. Um, and then the cochlea contains the organs for hearing. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Here again, external ear. Here you can see the auricle or the pinna. The external acoustic meatus leads to the eardrum or tympanic membrane. That separates the um, external ear from the middle ear. The middle ear houses our three auditory ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. The stapes connects to the oval window, which is the entrance then into the internal ear, the inner ear, or the labyrinth as it's known sometimes. Uh, you can see here is the vestibular apparatus for our organs for balance, and the cochlea with our organs for hearing. So the external and middle ears all of this is for uh, the sense of hearing. Um, and then the inner ear uses the um, kind of vestibular apparatus and the cochlea for both hearing and balance. Um, if we look within the cochlea, that little spiral snail-shaped um, structure, we find what is called the spiral organ or the organ of corti. Um, and this is the organ for our sense of hearing. Um, it consists of these receptor cells, these hair cells, which have these little tiny kind of stereocilia on top of them. Um, they lay atop what is called the basilar membrane and then overlaying the hair cells is the tectorial membrane and of course you can see here is the cochlear branch of the vestibular cochlear nerve um, so that you know, we can send those signals to our auditory cortex. How you are able to hear, which includes actually using your ears right now um, as you listen to this lecture, um, what we are looking at is sound waves, right? Which are which are just uh, essentially vibrations um, in the air, and the wavelength, right, is kind of the the, the distance of the the length of the, the 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 wave traveling. The frequency is how often these waves are coming, and frequency is related to pitch. The amplitude, or the height of the waves, is then related to loudness, right? Um, a, a louder sound is going to have a higher amplitude, a softer sound is going to have a lower amplitude. Sound waves that have a higher frequency have a higher pitch, and sound waves that have a lower frequency then have a lower pitch. So I mentioned earlier that the outer and middle ear is all about our sense of hearing, not balance. The purpose of the pinna is to basically act like a funnel to direct the sound waves um, through the external acoustic meatus um, and to the eardrum. So the sound waves are directed by the pinna into the ear canal and then they will strike the eardrum. That sets the tympanic membrane vibrating at the same frequency as the sound waves. Well, the auditory ossicles are connected to the tympanic membrane. So when the tympanic membrane starts vibrating, the auditory ossicles start vibrating. They actually can then amplify um, 
those vibrations um, and then such that the stapes then acts almost like a piston and kind of pounds on the oval window. That transfers these sound waves that have thus, are, thus far been traveling in air into the fluid-filled cochlea. And that's what you see here, where the cochlea has essentially been um, uncoiled from its little um, snail shape. And you can see here now the sound waves are traveling within the fluid-filled cochlea. Let's take a look at that. So what happens as the fluid waves travel through the cochlea is these um, waves will essentially strike and bend the basilar membrane. When the basilar membrane um, vibrates and, and, and moves, that essentially pushes the stereocilia um, up against the tectorial membrane, which bends the stereocilia. Um, and so these are mechanoreceptors. Um, and when they bend, that opens the ion channels, causes the release of neurotransmitters from the receptor cells, um, and we get an action potential in the cochlear nerve um, such that the information is then um, about frequency and pitch and amplitude and loudness sent from these um, hair cells from these receptors here in the spiral organ to the brain so that our brain can interpret that as sound. Now, high-pitched sounds, again, are very high frequency, which means they have a very short wavelength, and they tend to not travel very far. Um, they, they don't have the kind of energy to travel real, real far, and so they tend to depress the basilar membrane um, fairly close to the oval window here. Again, you can see they've, like, we've kind of spread out and unwound the cochlea. However, low-pitched sounds, which have a very low frequency and thus a very long wavelength, they can travel really, really, really far. In fact, actually, low-frequency sounds can travel hundreds of miles. Think about like whale songs traveling in the ocean. Um, but in our ear, <laughs> we're not talking quite, quite that far. But you'll see, because they can travel further, um, they are more likely to depress the basilar membrane um, much further along in the cochlea. Um, near kind of the, the kind of helicotreba kind of apex here. Um, and so your um, cochlea, different parts of your cochlea are stimulated um, by different um, kind of pitches and frequencies of sound. So let's talk about balance. That's the other bit of um, special sense that goes on here in the ear. When we're talking about equilibrium, we're really talking about um, head movement and kind of where your head is positioned um, because the apparatus for equilibrium is located here, of course, in our inner ear. Um, but our balance is very much dependent on not just kind of where our head is positioned, but also whether our eyes are opened or closed um, has a huge kind of impact on our balance, um, and, and then also our stretch receptors, um, things like our muscle spindles that kind of sense how our body is positioned, um, and that information is very often um, kind of processed by the cerebellum. Right? Um, if you have a damaged cerebellum, you can very often have damage um, to your equilibrium. So the vestibular apparatus is our organ, um, or really organs, uh, for balance um, because it consists of um, the vestibule, which is this portion here, and then the semicircular canals, which is this portion here. Here again, you can see the cochlea for hearing. So in the vestibule, we have what are the utricles and the saccules, utricle and saccule. And Within the utricle and saccule, um, within the vestibule, we have what are called maculae. And that's actually the sense organ for this particular type of balance. And it's really called static equilibrium, right? Static meaning not changing. And so the vestibule and the maculae look at head position. The semicircular canals 
They are filled with fluid as well, um, but their sense organ that they contain is called the crista ampullaris or the ampullae, um, and they sense what we call dynamic equilibrium, right? Dynamic meaning changing, and so we're talking about not where the head is, but how the head is moving. And when we talk about equilibrium, it's really a combination of both static equilibrium, how is the head positioned, and dynamic equilibrium, how is the head moving? So let's look at the vestibule first. Um, <clears throat> in the utricle and saccule, which are within the vestibule, um, we have these maculae sense organs, and this is what the maculae looks like. Um, and it's stereocilia again, just like we saw with hearing, so mechanal receptors, but on top of the stereocilia are these little calcium carbonate structures called otoliths. They're basically little tiny crystals in your ear. And when you are, um, let's say you're, you're upright and, and facing ahead, then the otoliths are not bending the stereocilia. But if you move your head, if your head is now in a different position, in this instance, you can see the head is tilted back. Um, the otoliths are pulled on by gravity, which bends the stereocilia and ignites an action potential in the vestibular nerve so that your body can then say, oh, hey, my head is back. If we look at the semicircular canals, you, here you can see the crista ampullaris or the ampulla. And there is fluid, endolymph, inside of these canals. Um, and what the semicircular canals are detecting is how is your head moving? moving. So when your head is moving, we're looking at kind of a rotational movement, right? Um, imagine you have turned your body one way, well that sends the fluid shifting this way, and that then bends these mechanoreceptor stereocilia Ignites an action potential in the vestibular nerve, and your body can then say, oh, my head is tilted, or um, I'm shaking my head, or I'm nodding my head. And so you have three canals. Um, they do three different things, right? So you can do kind of the um, whether you're talking about whether your head is kind of tilting side to side, whether your head is nodding yes or no, whether your head is um, kind of shaking back and forth. Um, so each of the different semicircular canals looks at a different um, kind of rotational movement of your head. So the posterior one is the one that looks at, like, are you tilting your head from side to side? The horizontal one looks at, are you shaking your head, right? Are you nodding? No. Um, and then the superior one looks at the, the nodding, like, are you nodding yes and kind of bobbing your head up and down? Um, and so that is how equilibrium works. And altogether, cochlea, and the semicircular canals in the vestibule contain our organs for hearing and balance.